Hey guys, in this video we are looking at loads and loads of things to do with the atom. Now, if you've been studying chemistry for a long time, you may think you know all of this already, but we're going to take it just that little bit further, make everything a tiny bit more complicated, and take it all to the next level for you. If you want some questions to go with this video, you can pop over to my website and get the booklet that I've made to accompany all of these. Here is our structure of an atom. In the middle we have our protons. We also have our neutrons. And then whizzing around the outside in shells we have electrons. But this is a rather fake model of an atom. When we draw it like this we're not drawing things in proportion. Because this nucleus in the middle is actually incredibly 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 tiny compared to the rest of it if the nucleus was the size of a football the nearest electron would be nearly one kilometer away which means the majority of you is made up of empty space now think about all the amazing things you've done today getting up getting dressed um, maybe getting ready for school or something and then think about the amazing things we've invented like the ipad i'm writing on on the internet and the majority of the person that invented all things and you the person that's doing all these things is made up of empty space and if we removed all of that empty space from a single human being, that person would be smaller than a grain of salt. I just want you to pause for a second and think about how amazing that actually is. You need to be able to recall some facts about our protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you'll see here, I've written it and I've written just a little notation, a little shorthand for protons, neutrons, and electrons. And that includes that charge on there just to help you remember. So protons are in the nucleus. So our neutrons. And electrons are in the shells throw around the outside. Now shells are also called energy levels, which is a much more accurate description. Protons have a plus one charge, neutrons have a neutral charge, and electrons have a minus one charge. The mass of a proton is one, the mass of a neutron is one, and the mass of an electron is so incredibly small, it is one two thousandth the size of a proton. On the periodic table there is loads and loads of information. You just need to be able to interpret this clearly and properly. So the small number on the periodic table and it doesn't matter where it is located. Different periodic tables are going to have it located in different places. It just matters that it's a small number. This is the atomic number or the proton number and this is going to tell us the number of protons this gives us the identity. So this is the really, really key piece of information to tell us what something is. It is also going to tell us the number of electrons in an atom and only in an atom, not in an ion. We have the symbol here. This is um, really, really important because this doesn't change uh, depending on whatever language you're speaking. So the periodic table is like a universal language for chemists. I can talk to somebody in a completely different country who speaks a completely different language. And as long as we are both using um, periodic table, we can understand each other. Um, nickel is the name and then we down here we have the nucleon number or the mass number. Now this is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And you will notice that this isn't a whole number. Now it is impossible to have 0.69 of a proton or a neutron. That is because this number is the relative isotopic mass. I'll explain in a later video um, how to work that out, um, what the maths behind it is, and why it's important. 
the way atoms are created in space is completely random. It's things smashing into each other and some of them fusing, some of them not fusing. So while we're going to have a consistent number of protons within a particular type of atom, we are not necessarily going to have a consistent number of neutrons. And things that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. Now we can work this out um, by looking at the periodic table and the names of the isotopes. So I've got two examples for you here, magnesium 22 and magnesium 24. Now because it is magnesium, it is going to have, as we can see from our periodic table, 12 protons. Absolutely nothing about this is going to change. If it doesn't have 12 protons, it is not magnesium. Because these are both atoms, um, magnesium-22 and magnesium-24, they are also going to have 12 electrons. If they had a different number of electrons, then they would be an iron. We're going to come to that shortly. Now, isotopes have a different number of neutrons. And neutrons, we are going to be looking at the nucleon on mass number down there. And again, it doesn't matter where this number is located. It's just the larger of the two numbers. To work out the number of neutrons, we need to take the mass number and minus the atomic number. Now, we're not going to be using the mass number in the periodic table. We're going to be using the mass number given here, 22 and 24. So for magnesium 22, what we need to do is 22 minus 12, that is going to give us 10 neutrons. And for magnesium 24, we are going to do 24 minus 12, that is going to give us 12 neutrons. So for different isotopes, they have the same number of protons, the same number of electrons, but different numbers of neutrons. When we are talking about the differences between atoms and ions, we are talking about the differences in electrons. We're going to start with protons, and we've got our periodic table over here. You can see 11 and 17 are the atomic numbers. Now, an atom of sodium is going to have 11 protons, and an atom, um, an ion of sodium is going to have 11 protons. An atom of chlorine is going to have 17 protons, and an ion of chlorine is going to have 17 protons. Because if an ion of chlorine didn't have 17 protons, then it wouldn't be chlorine. It would be something else. So the neutrons we do in exactly the same way. We take our mass number and we divide minus the atomic number. For ease here, I'm just going to round my mass numbers to the nearest whole number. So I have 23 minus 11, that is going to give me 12 neutrons in an atom, 12 neutrons in an ion. For chlorine, 35.5 minus 17 is going to give me 18.5 neutrons in an atom and 18.5 neutrons in an ion. Now, electrons is where it is different. So for an atom, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, and that is the same as the atomic number. So an atom of sodium is going to have 11 electrons, and an atom of chlorine is going to have 17 electrons. Now, when we undergo bonding, when something turns into an ion, which is losing or gaining electrons, this electron here on the outer shell of sodium, sodium doesn't want an electron on its outer shell. If it's going to bond with chlorine, it is going to give that chlorine um, the electron. So sodium has lost an electron, which means it is going to go from 11 electrons to 10 electrons. Chlorine has gained an electron, which means it's going from 17 electrons to 18 electrons. Now, what is going to happen is these are now turning into ions. Sodium is going to turn into an Na plus ion, and chlorine is going to turn into a Cl minus ion. Now, I know this seems like the long way around because sodium has lost, but it becomes a positive ion. I know in your head this feels like it's the opposite way around. But if we look at the charges here, 
Protons are positive and electrons are negative. In an atom, there is an equal number of positive and negative, so they balance each other out. In an iron, protons are still positive, so it has 11 positive charges, and it has 10 negative charges. So it has more positive charges than it has negative charges, so it will become a positive iron. Over in chlorine, the iron will have 17 positive charges, and it will have 18 negative charges. So it will be a negative charge overall. Now I would love for everyone to be able to work this out. Um, but there is a quicker um, and easier way to remember it. As a general rule of thumb. And there are always going to be exceptions to rules. Things that are in group 1 down here are going to form plus 1 ions. Things that are in group 2 down here are going to form plus 2 ions. Things that are in group 6 over here are going to form minus 2 ions. And things that are in group 7 over here are going to form minus 1 ions.